Hello everyone, George here, and I think it's about time we started to actually detect Aruco markers through our webcam monitoring system. So we're going to create a new function in this video that we're going to use called Start Webcam Monitoring. So this function is fairly simple. It's going to return an integer value to tell us whether or not we were successful. It's going to take in our camera matrix as a reference. It's going to take in our distance coefficients as a reference. And of course, finally, it's going to take in our Aruco square dimensions. Let's go ahead and begin with int start webcam monitoring. It's going to take in a constant mat object, which is our matrix. Remember to look at the past videos on how to create that matrix as well as how to save it out and load it out. And finally, our Aruco square dimensions. Now first we need to start monitoring our webcam and that's going to be very similar to what we were doing down here. We're going to check if the video is open, we're going to set everything up, and we're going to make a big loop. So let's go ahead and do that with mat frame, which is the frame we're currently dealing with. We're going to need a vector of marker IDs. So let's create a vector, type int, and these are the IDs of each marker that are found basically. Then we're going to have a vector of vectors that are going to hold the point two Fs. That is the points that are found on the corners of the marker, as well as any rejected points. I don't plan on using the rejected, can uh, re rejected points for anything, but you could if you wanted to. And finally, we're going to need to use something in Aruco called detector parameters. And we're going to just call them parameters. Because we could potentially be using a lot of different dictionaries, if you remember there were many different sizes of them, we need to make sure we pick the right one. So we're going to create a pointer object to the Aruco dictionary. And we're going to call it our marker dictionary. And that's going to be Aruco colon colon get predefined dictionary. And the predefined dictionary that we're using is Aruco predefined dictionary name, colon, colon, dict, D-I-C-T. We're using the smallest one, four by four, underscore 50, because I don't see us needing more than 50 markers. If you do need more markers than that, then you can be using one of the higher level versions. Now we need to start video capturing. So let's do video capture, and I'm gonna do vid one. I'm doing vid1 and not vid0 because if you remember correctly, I have to have two webcams plugged in because my capture software actually takes the first one and holds on to it and doesn't let me access it. Now we need to do a check to see whether or not we even got access to this thing. So let's do vid.isopened. So if it's not opened, we're going to return a negative one, which means bail, we bailed out and uh, we should probably bail out gracefully from the program. Now we need to create a window that's going to hold the frame that we keep pulling from the webcam. So let's do named window. Call it webcam. And call the CV underscore window auto size is what I want. We are going to be getting from our Aruco markers not only rotation vectors but also translation vectors for where that marker actually exists. And then you can use those to do interesting things, such as if you're working with OpenGL or DirectX, you could superimpose on top of that marker, since you have the world coordinates of it, uh, a character or some other object. But for right now, we're just going to grab them. So let's make a vector of this time vec 3D, 3 double. We'll do rotation vectors and translation vectors. Great. Now is our while true loop. Since we have a webcam, we're going to keep going over it until we want to bail out for some reason, which is probably going to be a key press. So if the uh, if we have not read a frame, we're going to break. We're done. and then the while loop will continue. 
Otherwise, if we have received the frame, we're going to try to do a RUCO marker detection, and that's going to be using three different methods. The first one is called a RUCO colon colon detect markers. The second one is a RUCO uh, colon colon estimate posts on a single marker. Then finally, we're going to want to show that we've actually detected something visibly on the screen, and we're going to use the Aruco draw axis function for that. So let's do this. So we'll do Aruco colon colon detect markers. To detect the markers, we first need to pass in the frame, then our marker dictionary so it knows which markers it's looking for. Then we're going to pass in our marker corners list, or a vector I should say, and then our marker IDs. So what's going to happen here is that our marker corners and our marker IDs are going to get populated by this fu by this function. Next up is Aruco colon colon estimate pose single marker because we're working with single markers. We're going to pass into it our marker corners, which is the ones that were detected. We're going to pass in our Aruco square dimension which I had also put up here as being a, uh, a constant. So you don't have to pass that in if you, would, if you don't want to. In fact, um, I'm just going to use the constant in this case. You, you could get rid of this variable. But if you were working with multiple sizes of Aruco markers, you might want to use that variable right there. Then we're going to pass in our camera matrix and our distance coefficients. Finally, our rotation vectors and then our translation vectors. Great. As you can tell, this one right here, the estimate pose single markers, is going to be our workhorse for actually uh, taking in our camera matrix and our distance coefficients and figuring out where this thing is in world space. Detect markers is just going to find them for us. Although the process in which it does that is very interesting and I recommend you read the documentation on how it works. Now we're going to enter into a for loop. So we're going to get back all the different markers that were detected. We're going to iterate over each one and then if we uh, have found one, we're going to draw our axis on top of it. So let's do for int i is equal to zero, i is less than marker ids dot size, and then i plus plus. Now we're going to do a RUCO draw axis. We're going to draw this to the frame. We're going to pass in our camera matrix, our distance coefficients as before, our rotation vectors, and our translation vectors. Great. And finally, we pass in the length of the axis. I'm going to put 0.1 down. Now we're going to do an IM show. Once again, to our webcam, do a frame, and then we're going to do a wait key. If wait key 30 is greater than or equal to 0, we'll break. And we'll keep going on. And then finally, should all this have worked, I'm just going to return a 1. Wonderful. So now all we need to do is modify our uh, great. So with that function and uh, of course our camera matrix and distance coefficients, which we calculate beforehand, we'll be able to monitor our webcam for the Aruco markers and actually draw them out. So now what I need to do is a little bit of cleanup. Our main method is full of nasty junk from before where we were opening up a video stream in order to find our chess boards and of course create our camera calibration matrix and save it out. Let's get this out of here and move it into its own method or function. So starting here and moving on up is our while loop where most things happen. Here's our webcam. Here's our frames per second. This tests to see if it's open. There's our video camera object. Here's our markers for rejection and detection, our distance coefficients, our camera matrix, and our matte frame. So in reality, we're going to want to copy everything out of uh, main and create a new function. I'm just going to call this one. Let's do void camera calibration process. Paste everything in there. We can get rid of our return zeros since I'm just going to return void. I 
Great. So let's put this method inside of our main function. So because this is going to be creating for us several different things that we need to retain, such as our camera matrix and our distance coefficients, we're going to want to output them, or at least create references to these different objects. So let's pass these in as references that we're going to be modifying. So our camera matrix is our first reference. And our distance coefficients will be our second reference. Great. Now these are going to get defined elsewhere in our main loop. And they will then get passed in here and in here. After the camera calibration process is over, we're going to start trying to detect our Aruco markers. Doing that, we'll scroll up and we'll just do our start webcam monitoring. And really, I should probably call this something a little bit better. So now that it's finished, we can go ahead and call our start webcam monitoring. Passing in our camera matrix and our distance coefficients. And now is the time when I need to take out my calipers and actually measure the size of my Aruco marker because I printed them smaller than usual. After measuring with a pair of calipers, they are roughly 90 millimeters apart. So that means 0 0.099 meters. And put an F. First. So let's first just hit run and see whether or not our webcam stuff works. So there's our webcam and it's trying to detect the uh, checkerboard. So let me grab the checkerboard and we'll go ahead into detection mode for that. All right, so after a little pause, I think we're all set up now. So let's go ahead and hit local Windows debugger, launch this thing, find out which webcam is actually going to be activated. Here we go, looks like it's my little ball here. And there we are. So let's take some snapshots. All right, so we've captured at least 15 images. Now we're processing the information. And if we're lucky, um, we'll get our camera calibration pushed out. Let's take a look really quick. Hit stop. Or actually, let's hit break. Just escape. And let's go to our folder and open folder in File Explorer. Look at I Love Camera Calibration. And it looks like we've got our calibration numbers right here. We've got our number of rows so forth and so on, and then the actual values for each one. Great. So now, instead of doing camera calibration processing, let's do load camera calibration. Inside of that, we're going to do the name of the file, and the name of the file was, oh, what was that? I love camera calibration. But let's double check that real quick. So open solution. Control A, Control C, and Control V. Next up is our mat, so camera matrix. And then next up is our distance coefficients. Perfect. OK. Then we can start our web monitoring. And what do you know? Check it out. So a little bit slow right there, but Ooh, unhandled exceptions. So let's figure out what happened there. So let's break. So Uruko draw axis frame camera matrix distance coefficients rotation and translation vectors. This time we'll start with the bad marker and see if that is the problem. Nope. It's able to detect that one marker. Let's grab a different marker and it can detect that marker. And let's grab another marker and it can detect that marker as well. So individually, it's fine. It's just when we do this, 
we bail out. Unhandled exception. The reason for this is because uh, rotation vectors needs to be the ith element, and translation vectors also needs to be the ith translation. Because remember, we're detecting multiple markers, not just one. So let's hit continue and try this again. Okay. Marker number one. Marker number two. And marker number three. Well, there you go, guys. Ruko marker detection, 101. Basics you can get out of it. Now that you've got that information, you can start doing interesting things, like placing objects where these ones are. And, uh, wow, this has been a long series, guys. We've gone through a lot of material, and I hope you've really enjoyed it. I don't plan on really continuing this series much further, if at all. At this point, I think I've given you more than enough knowledge to get out there and uh, create your own Aruko system uh, that detects the markers and, of course, at the very least, displays the X, Y, and Z axes. So, I really hope you enjoyed the series. Like it if you did. If you didn't like it, of course, dislike it, and uh, always remember to leave comments below. And if you want more material and other subject matters like this, remember to subscribe. I'll see you all next time. George out. Bye.